Hey there, I pray this video encourages you and helps you grow and become more like Jesus. Follow along with the notes linked in the description. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Enjoy. When people get into church, they may not realize uh, that, that conflict still happens in church. I think there's this false expectation that when we get to church that everyone is just really, really good with each other and handles each other really well. Like we're not flawed individuals still or something. Uh, and we see in our scripture today that there is this conflict over John Mark. John Mark had previously uh, disappeared. He just abandoned Paul and Barnabas in Acts chapter 13, around the time where Paul was dealing with Bar-Jesus, the sorcerer. And uh, we don't know why he did this, but uh, he, he left them. And now there's a disagreement about him joining them on their next missionary journey. I don't want to necessarily focus on the conflict. I actually want to focus on Mark and talk about how we can be a contributing member of the body of Christ. And, and just here's the good news, okay? Mark did abandon them, but Mark ended up coming back full circle and being a benefit to the church. So I just wanna use this to help encourage us to be a contributing member of the church body. And so let's go into Acts chapter 15, verse 36. It says this, after some time, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back and visit each city where we previously preached the word of the Lord. Isn't that a good pastor? Isn't that a good evangelist and missionary and leader of the church to make sure all these churches that we planted is doing well? I think that's just so, so cool of him to do that. He wanted to see how the new believers are doing. So verse 37 says, Barnabas agreed and wanted to take along John Mark. Just so you know, John Mark is the author of Mark and he's also Barnabas' nephew. But Paul disagreed strongly since John Mark had deserted them and Pamphylia and had not continued with them in their work. Their disagreement was so sharp that they separated. Barnabas took John Mark with him and sailed for Cyprus. Paul chose Silas, and as he left, the believers entrusted him to the Lord's gracious care. And then you can see that it focuses on Paul. And from the rest of this book, it focuses primarily on Paul. Then he traveled throughout Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches there. Barnabas, the encourager, also this is, uh, this is Mark's uncle. And so you have a man who is spirit-filled, and he's an encourager, he's a family member, and he believes that, that Mark's ministry days are not over, and he wants to give him another chance. You have Paul, also spirit-filled, uh, a missionary, fearless missionary, a pioneer who's not afraid to get persecuted and hurt who's saying, in a sense, really, I can't rely on Mark. And so they disagree. And there you have, it's interesting, two spirit-filled men who disagree about whether John Mark should join them on this trip to go check on all the new believers in the churches. What's their decision? To multiply. I know we might use the word divide, but let's use multiply. You know what God did in this situation? God multiplied his church and actually doubled their efforts. God did not allow this disagreement to hinder the mission of God. Instead, God actually used this to train up two new apprentices or disciples underneath these leaders. So now you have Silas, who's famous now in scripture as well, joining Paul. I love how these two leaders, although they disagree, did not let the mission of God be hindered. Amen? Amen. The mission of God is the bigger picture. No matter what disagreement we have in the church body, the mission of God must take precedence. We must hold on to the fact that it's not about us, it's about the glory of Jesus Christ, it's about the salvation of souls who are damned to hell and can be saved through the grace of Jesus, amen? That's what it's about. I feel torn between the two decisions. I find myself actually leaning more towards Barnabas' approach. 
I believe in multiple chances. I believe in encouraging and, and training up leaders when they've, when they've fallen or they've just, and we don't even know why Mark left. They, they have many theories, but we cannot, um, it's, it's all conjecture. We couldn't say why. Some believe it was the stress. Some believe it was the intensity of that situation with the spiritual warfare with Bar Jesus um, and that conflict with Paul. Some people think he may have been homesick and wanted to see his, his mother. We're not too sure. And that, you know what? That's the past. But I, for me personally, I would love to bring someone in and go, okay, look, I'll give you another chance. Come with me. But at the same time, I see Paul's perspective. Um, the man was already stoned almost to death. He needed someone to be there next to him to help him carry on the mission. If he were to be persecuted and died, who would take over the, the trip? Who would, who would handle carrying things? Who would handle documenting things? Who would do all that? And he just couldn't really rely on Mark. So neither one are actually wrong. They both had their fair reasons. And so God uses this and sees this and goes, let's, let's multiply and conquer. But all we see now is the journey of Paul and the rest of the book of Acts. Good news, Paul commends Barnabas later on in his letters. So they're still friends. And then Paul also asks for John Mark to join him when he's writing to a letter to Timothy because, ready for this, he finds him useful. So things turned around for John Mark, amen? And he was welcomed back into you know, ministry with Paul. So Paul's not heartless. He, he just it was serious what he was doing. He is an intense leader who's going to need dependable people alongside him. Don't we need that too in our world? Wouldn't you agree that's a good quality to have, to have dependable people who are going to be there? I want to I talk about this, this point today, and because I'll be taking this little bit of a preaching break, I want to encourage us all to remember, number one, that we belong to the body, the church of Jesus Christ. We belong to the body, the church of Jesus Christ. It brings, the scripture brings that to the surface and I want to show you scriptures here that we could easily refer back to for the rest of the sermon that show us that we belong to the body. Ephesians 1, 22 through 23, God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. So Paul loves the analogy of the human body. And he says, Jesus is the head. He's the leader, the source, the mind over the body. The mind, by the way, in the Bible connects to the heart. So Jesus is also the heart of the church as well. Romans 12, four through five says, just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. Interesting. So we're all connected to each other. Ephesians 4, 1 through 6, Paul, Paul writes this to the church of Ephesus. Therefore, I, a prisoner serving for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. So live a holy life. Live a righteous life because God has called you. God has saved you. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. Make an allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. Make every effort. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you've been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, referring to the baptism of Jesus Christ in water. One God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. So we have been placed in the body of Christ through Christ, through his spirit, through that water baptism. Church, you belong to the body of Christ. Whether you've realized it yet, whether you have felt that yet, whether you believe that spiritually, that is the case. When you believe in Jesus Christ, we are one body together. Amen. Can we give God glory and praise for that? <clears throat> The book of Acts shows us the value of the body of Christ over and over again through 
chapter 1 through chapter 15. In chapter 1, they were in prayer together, united in prayer, waiting for the Holy Spirit to come on Pentecost. And when he came, he filled them all. They were all filled. They were all in bond, uh, bond, they were bonding together. They were united together in prayer, seeking the Lord, waiting on the Lord. We see the church uh, praying for Peter when he was arrested. We see the church come together when the widow's table uh, was not being taken care of and the distribution tables needed help. The church came together. And of course, last week we learned this big business meeting where the church came together to figure out what do we do with the differences between Jews and Gentiles. In other words, we need the church. We need each other. I think the greatest scripture for this to illustrate this though is Acts 2. 42 through 47, it will be on the screen for you. It says, all the believers, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. Say all. All, all the believers. Say devoted. devoted. They were devoted to this. All of them were can you imagine the power of the church, the strength of the church, if we were all devoted to these things? We would be unstoppable. We're meant to be unstoppable. The gates of hell will not prevail, Jesus said. And again, I want to reiterate, the gates, not the advancement army of, of hell, the gates of hell, meaning that we are progressing into dark places pushing back the darkness and defeating darkness because we go and make disciples, amen? Let's keep going here. It says, a deep sense of awe came over them all and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. We also see later that the believers performed signs and wonders in Acts 8. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who are being saved. I truly believe that God adds to the church, the church that is healthy and loving and taking care of his mission. So what are the implications of belonging? What are the results of belonging to the body, the church of Jesus Christ? Number one, we belong to the spiritual and physical family of Jesus Christ. We belong to the greatest, strongest, most powerful family or community in the world. And the reason for this is because Jesus is the head, the leader, the mind, and the source of all life for the family and community of believers, the church. Jesus is our leader. That's why we're so strong. That's why we're so powerful. That's why we're united and together as one because Jesus remains the head and the leader of the church. Secondly, and by the way, let me reiterate uh, Colossians 1 where it's the supremacy of Jesus, Jesus is supreme over all. That's why the church is the greatest family and the greatest community in the world, because Jesus is over all things, and he has made us who we are today, thank God, because we couldn't do it on ourselves, on our own. Secondly, God has loved and saved us with his grace and gives us everlasting life. Let's not forget that. We are a strong family because... It's the love and grace of Jesus that makes us that way. We couldn't be here without him. Thirdly, we've been empowered and gifted by the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit who raised Christ from the dead that lives inside of us. We are strong, church, when we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. And lastly, and I could go longer, there's many reasons, but I'm just giving four to this point. Lastly, the reason why we are the greatest family in the world, the greatest community in the world, is because we have purpose. We know why we're still here. We know why we were made, why we were born, why we're still here, because we are called into his mission 
to reach a loss and save people for eternity. That has given me great purpose and a sense of identity and focus in my life. How about you? We belong. The implications of belonging to the body of Christ is we belong to the greatest family, and that's the family of Jesus Christ. And we're so blessed to have Jesus as our Lord and leader. Secondly, the church, the implications of belonging to the body of Christ is the church should rely on Jesus to feed and lead us forward. If he's the head, like the brain that sends transmissions to the body to do what it is supposed to do, Jesus is the head. Jesus is the mind. He's the heart. He's the leader and the authority that develops our thinking and directs our doing. 1 Corinthians 2.16 says to have the mind of Christ. To have the mind of Christ. So to think like Jesus would think. So the mind should go through the body. The mind of Christ should flow through the body of Christ and we should think and feel like he does, amen? And if whatever we think becomes typically a belief or conviction that flows out of what we do and so then therefore we do what we think. Jesus is our source of life and everything in between. He is our source, you right for this? so we can be resourceful. What we don't have, he can give us so that we can be resourceful in the family of God, in the mission field. He gives gifts and leadership to the church to equip and build up the body, to make us mature, make us whole and fruitful. And through this work, God will be glorified and many will be saved and make disciples. We are gifted and we are filled and we are loved and nurtured by Jesus so that we can be fruitful. And I would encourage you that if you don't feel fruitful, get connected to the vine again, like John 15 says. He says, remain in me and you will be fruitful. He will help you be fruitful. Thirdly, what are the implications of belonging to the body of Christ? We are interconnected and interdependent of one another. Now this one, this one, this one's interesting. We need each other. We belong to one another. In other words, we can't be solo Christians. We belong to the spiritual and physical family. We must be considerate of others because we're not the only ones in the family of God. Do you know how many times we have to put our interests to the side for the sake of the whole family. Mom, dad, you know what I'm talking about. (laughs) The sacrifice for your children. Didn't Jesus do that? Didn't he lay down his life for our sake, but also for his father's glory? Did he not lay down his life so that we could be made whole? And so in the body of Christ, we are to be like Christ. And we are to lay down our selfish ambition and interest and consider the greater vision, the greater mission, the greater picture of the church. We don't just rely on and depend on others. We are reliable and dependable too. If we're interconnected and interdependent, then we, yes, when we have a need, the church should be there. But once our need is cared for and we're back up on our feet, now we are meant to be dependable for others. Do you believe and agree that? Because that's in scripture. Even Paul condemns those who have lazy hands and idle hands. He judges them and says, you must stop doing that. You must work. You must help. You must contribute. It's true. That's in scripture. Do what you can. Be involved. Be dependable. Don't just rely and depend on everyone. Be a contribution. We have a responsibility. If we're connected and interdependent, we have a responsibility to care and spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Hebrews talks about that. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. Don't forsake the assembly. Don't forsake being together as the body of Christ. Spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Encourage, inspire each other to do these things. If we're interconnected and interdependent, 
Rather than spending our time pointing out frivolous problems, we look for ways to contribute and be a solution to the problems, amen? Because if we are one body, then we have to become part of that solution if there's a legitimate problem. We need to be a help versus a hinder. Every time we point one finger, how many fingers are pointing back? If we point out a problem, there's still three pointing back at us. Three reasons to now become part of that solution. It doesn't mean that you don't have perspective. It doesn't mean that you don't have an opinion. It doesn't mean that you don't have valid points. But are we willing to be a part of the solution that we see We see an issue in our world, will we join the church to help fix that? If we see a situation in the church where there's a lack of ministry for someone or groups of people, will we be willing to step up and help with that? Will we be willing to give to help be financial resources for those things? We work as a team. Imagine today if Pastor Ryan didn't show up We actually take that for granted, don't we? Just so you know, that's actually one of the pastor's greatest nightmares is oversleeping our alarm clock. (laughs) Yeah, just missing missing the alarm, not hearing it. And it's 9.30 and you're you're supposed to preach. I've had nightmares like that. (laughs) It's scary. Can you imagine though, if I didn't show up, what would we be doing right now? My team would be panicking. Ryan, pick up your phone. Where are you? Where are you? You might go, oh, okay, it was, you know, it was an anomaly. He doesn't ever do this. It was just one week, all right? But what if I don't show up the next week? Then you're starting to scratch your head and go, is everything okay? And then, and then if I don't show up the third week, you begin to question whether you can trust me to even be here, amen? I would too. Actually, I'd probably be like that after the first week, you know? Because if I'm gone, I need to make sure I organize my life to make sure people can fill the pulpit, right? But, and, and thank God we've done that. Thank God for people hungry to preach and teach too. But like imagine if, if I just didn't have a reason, you'd, you'd probably not trust me anymore. I would not be dependable, right? And I, and I would not have a problem with that if you felt that way because it would be true. We don't realize how many people it takes to make today happen. I am so grateful for all the people involved. And I want to actually move into that. And by the way, I thought about this too. <laughs> what, happens, what happens when you sit on your legs too long? You know what happens? They, they fall asleep. The church falls asleep when we don't be involved in the mission. Our legs fall asleep if we're sitting too much and we're not doing for the Lord. Right? It happens. Man, that hurts too when it happens, doesn't it? (laughs) But my last point here on the implications, we are loved and gifted by God to strengthen the church and fulfill the Great Commission. And I wanna wanna show you real quick a picture of of three pictures. I'm gonna go out of order, so sorry, tech team. I wanna show you uh, some pictures I took of people serving because we don't realize what it takes sometimes to make today happen or what it takes to make church happen. But this was a starting point, fast track we did together. We had over 40 in this one. The last one we had around 70 people involved. Okay. And I'm not teaching that session. We have people that are in the body of Christ teaching now because we're equipping the saints for the work of ministry. This is gentlemen that are helping with the rocks. We had almost two dozen men here on the same day putting rocks around and, and helping give a facelift. It was well over needed. A lot of things need to be done and thank God they came out together to help us. And then look at this next picture. At the same time, at the same day, Financial Peace University, James Collins, one of our board members, helping people get out of debt so they can live generous and they can live at peace with their lives and finances. And this, they're actually missing some. This was packed. So all of this is happening on Saturday, not even on Sunday. And I just wanna say thank you for everyone who made that day. Because as a pastor, for me, that gave me so much joy 
to be there and look and say, wow, God, this is what, this is what it takes and this is what it feels like to have a church that works together. Can we just, uh, just thank God for that real quick for a moment? There's so many people involved in making Sundays happen and the week happen. We're a very active church and we couldn't be here if we didn't work well as a team. Look at all these gifts that God gives us. This is a slide. There's leadership gifts. There's supernatural uh, manifestation gifts in the middle. And then there's your ministry gifts that we often say. And honestly, there's more that really could be considered. These are just found in scripture. You have your ministry leadership gifts on the left that we saw especially in the book of Acts and we see active. And today we have, we favor more today evangelists, pastors, and teachers, but people still flow in all of those things. We have people in this room right now, we have, we have a, a, a husband and wife team who have built a school in Africa in our church who are like, are like apostles because they're planting missional schools in Africa that go to this church, that are here. It's beautiful to see. And if you go back up there for me, if you don't mind, just leave it up. Sorry if I ramble on. Go ahead and keep that slide up. God may give you a word of wisdom, word of knowledge, prophecy. There's someone in this room right now who has great faith. I've never seen such faith in this person and anyone else in this person. And I'm shocked to see he's here today because he's visiting, he's a missionary as well, and it's so encouraging to see him. But his faith, Randy Chambers, encouraged my faith for years, an FCA missionary who's here today. Let's just give God glory and praise that he's here as well today. He is not going to like that I did that either. He's not one for attention like that. People have the gift of healing, the working of miracles. People can discern whether it's the spirit of God or the spirit of man or an evil spirit. How about the gifts of tongues and the interpretation of tongues? You've heard that in the operation of our church so that we can be edified on a Sunday morning or it happens in small groups and in Bible studies. It happens through one-on-one -on -one discipleship. And then we need the, the team of helps and serve. That's what we saw in those pictures. Listen, church, your ability to help is like, oh my goodness, pastors love you. We love you. I don't teach. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a preacher. That's okay. We don't need a lot of those. But man, do we need people on this right side for sure. And we love the middle. And definitely the church in the world needs the ones on the left. But if you have abilities to help and serve and helping hands and feet, if you have the gift of hospitality, if you can build things, it took craftsmanship to make the temple. All these things matter, intercession, prayer, ministering, teaching. You might want to help teach the kids, the youth, whatever, exhorting, which means to proclaim or to preach. So maybe that's your gift as well. Giving, some people are just so good at giving. They think about the needs of others and they give, like, like they give out of their, out of their, um, Overflow, but also they tend to give as well when they don't have the overflow. It's an amazing gift. Administration. Do you know a lot of the people in our church have gift administration to help us be organized? It's amazing. Showing mercy and then leadership gifts. Church, God has blessed you with some of these gifts. To be a blessing to the body of Christ and to be a blessing to the mission. Can I get real with you? Like, not that I already haven't been this whole time, but let me be transparent. In a large church, it could be assumed that plenty of people are helping, but it's not the case because in a large church, you need a lot of ministries and large teams. And there's this assumption that, oh, there's enough people doing it. Well, the reality is that there's not enough people doing it actually, and that's the case, then some people are going to be always doing it every week and never have a chance to be in here to worship. Just to be completely frank with you and transparent. So there, there's this assumption that we have plenty of help because we're a large church. They must, they must have plenty of help. There's the assumption that, that Calvary has uh, plenty of money and ton of money because there's so many people at 10 um, and because our facility is here and we own another building. No, we're still 4.3 million in, in debt with our mortgage. 
You know, there's these assumptions that are not true. And so do not let the devil use that to keep you from being engaged in the mission of God. Amen? And we're always stronger in numbers. And we always need and want to see more people involved. Let me give you some ideas of the teams we have. We have worship team. And pardon my, the length of this paragraph, but I didn't realize how many teams we have. And I think I missed some. <laughs> worship team, tech and media team, usher, hospitality, host, connections and care, parking, security, nursery, kids, rangers on Wednesday nights, creative arts, youth leaders, young adult leaders, altar and prayer team, facilities and maintenance, benevolence, small group, outreach, missions, CEF has been involved big in our church, Operation Christmas Child Team, Thanksgiving Feast, Fall and Easter Fest, Women's and Men's Ministry, and I'm sure I'm missing some, and I apologize if I have. None of these important ministries and events could take place without hearts willing to invest time in serving and using their gifts, and I'm just so grateful because those pictures captured in just one day in just about five to six hours, the church working together. So I have a few questions for you. What passions has God given you? What passions has God given you? What abilities has God given you? He has deposited those into your life to use where you are in your workforce, but also to use in the body and in the mission. Oftentimes, people that have the ability of mercy and hospitality and are nurses, they are nurses. If you do a spiritual gifts assessment of our nurses, a lot of them have the gift of mercy and hospitality and helps and serve. And we are so blessed. We have a church full of medical field personnel and they are a blessing. And they help out in our, yeah, I forgot the medical team. We have the medical team back here right now in case we need to respond. So I wanna encourage you to discover to develop and deploy your gifts to contribute and serve with us. Amen? Discover them. Let us help you develop them. And by the way, how do you develop gifts? You typically get involved on the job training and using those gifts. Some people go, Ryan, how do I discover my gifts? It's often by serving that you discover your particular spiritual gifts. And the Lord will show you. But a lot of times it's connected to your passions. And you can use your passions and your abilities that God has used in the workforce or in life to use them for our church. I'm so grateful for the men and women who come here every week to help out with all the ministries that we have. It's amazing. Let me close with these thoughts. The strength, strength of the church comes from submitting, trusting, and following Jesus. Would you agree? We must Submit, trust, and follow Jesus. If he is the leader, this is where we find our strength. This is also where we grow. The strength of the church comes from everyone growing in the truth, love, and power of Jesus Christ. We are meant to grow and become more like Jesus, so we must find our strength in him and grow and mature in Jesus. So here's a question for you. How is your personal relationship with God doing? You know my heart. Before we ever come to church on Sundays, we should already be in fellowship with Jesus. Amen? Our time in the word, our time in prayer, our time in worship, living out our life of worship before we ever come to church. Let, let Jesus nurture and feed you every single day. He was feeding me yesterday, thank God. I couldn't live without him. John 15 says, apart from me, you can do nothing. So Jesus said. So I, I wanna encourage you, before you ever come to church, have a healthy relationship with Jesus. Thirdly, the strength of the church comes from knowing our place and gifts in the body and then working together. You know, Mark was such a benefit, such a blessing to the church. I can imagine Paul being a little disappointed and sad because he wanted to depend on, on John Mark. He wanted to depend on him. But what he was gonna do was gonna be intense. 
And, and it is possible that Paul saw so much value in John Mark, but he was sad because he needed someone dependent. And then we see that he did see that value, that John Mark changed his ways, that he went on that mission field with Barnabas and his life changed too. See, Mark turned his life around and now Paul wanted to see Mark and be alongside him. He wanted Mark to come help him because he found him useful. Church, let me tell you something. You are useful in the kingdom of God. Jesus makes you useful. Because he loves you, he has blessed you, he has empowered you. And lastly, the strength of the church determines our effectiveness in the great commission of making disciples. The strength and the health of the church determines our effectiveness in great commission of making disciples. But I also want to say this, all right? When the church gets involved in making disciples, when we get involved in reaching the lost and helping people follow Jesus it actually makes us healthier too. Are you with me on that? Consider this. Yes, do we need to get healthier and strong so that we're more effective in the mission field? Absolutely. But if we go out and do the work of God, it makes us healthier. It changes our perspective of why we're here again. It helps us not focus on the little things that are distractions. It helps us not bicker and complain with each other. It helps us stay focused on what matters most. When this team goes on this missions trip, the devil's gonna try to divide them. The devil's gonna try to get them to focus on themselves. But because they're gonna go and they're gonna focus on Jesus and focus on the mission, they're gonna be a really tight team. How I know? Because I've been on missions trips and I've watched the devil try to destroy us in the beginning. We called it, we prayed, we loved each other and then we focused on the mission and now some of the greatest memories I have is going on missions trips. There was a, a, a unity and strength that came from us all focusing. It's not about us. It's about Jesus and the mission. It strengthens us. It makes us healthier. Let us revere and respect what took Christ his life to bring us together. Let us revere and respect. This is a serious point to me. Ephesians 1 and Ephesians 2, it shows that Jesus paid his, with his life to bring the Jews and Gentiles together into one body. It cost Jesus his life. He poured out blood to bring us together into the body of Christ. Let us revere that. Let us respect that, that it took Christ his life to bring us together and walk in holiness and love with one another. Be holy and love each other. Let us take seriously the place Christ has won for us by fulfilling our role in his body and family. Think about that for a moment. Ephesians 2.10 says he prepared in advance works for us to do. In the same context of salvation and the price paid for us so that we could be saved, he also talks about how he prepared works for us to do as the body of Christ. Let us not let that be in vain. Let us figure out what is our role in the body of Christ and let us be faithful to it. Amen. It cost Jesus his life. What a blessing we can be to the mission and to the body of Christ when we figure that out. And lastly, let us be responsible members of his body who bring him glory. People ask, Pastor Ryan, how can I help? I've heard that over the years. And it's, uh, it's an interesting question. How can I help? It would be all of this. I would say all of this, but usually it uh, it's, needs to be a quicker, a quicker answer instead of a 35-minute sermon. Pastor Ryan, how can I help? I would say first and foremost, follow Jesus. Let him be the leader of your life. Follow Jesus. Because if, if, if anyone needs to help you become who you truly are. It's not me, it's Jesus. 
uh, yes, I am here as, the, as a pastor and teacher to equip and to help, but there's no doubt it has to be Jesus in you. I'm just here to help on the side. Like the only person who can truly change you is Jesus. And so I'm, I'm here supplemental. I'm, God has called me to, to help uh, exhort this message today. And I'm always gonna point you to Jesus, not, not to something like about me. And the second thing is, is to be an engaged member of the church. Like know that you are a member of this body and this church and be an active member of this church. If you're going to a different church, if someone, someone asked me that question, I would say be an active member in your church. Be an active member. The Lord gave me something that this morning in prayer, and it's, I think I'd be in trouble if I didn't say it. And so I need to obey the Lord and say it. If, if we haven't been pursuing being the body of Christ, if we haven't begun to serve or to give and give our time, talent, treasure, it's not, it's not helping, it's hurting. You may think that it's helping you because it gives you more time to do other things or more money to do other things, but the Lord wants you to know it, it, does, it does not help, it actually hurts. And it actually hurts you first because you're part of the body of Christ. And when we hurt ourselves, we hurt the whole body. And when we hurt the body, we hurt ourselves. It's the same image and same example of Jesus being the groom and we're the bride. How we treat our spouse is, is a reflection of how we think and feel towards Jesus. We are interconnected into this body and we are only hurting the body and hurting ourselves if we don't help the body. And God has blessed you and gifted you. And because of that, you can be a blessing. And I just wanna say thank you for those who are actively involved and actively serving, actively contributing in any way, shape or form. Thank you for being a blessing to the body of Christ. And I bet you, and I, I'm not a betting man, so forgive me for saying that. I believe that you are enjoying the blessings of being a blessing to the church. I know you are. I have never been disappointed serving in the body of Christ. I have never been sad or disappointed to contribute my finances, contribute my time or my gifts to the church. I've never been sad or disappointed by that. Instead, I've always been blessed. Amen. Amen. I have never been disappointed or sad about reaching the lost. That's exciting to me. I get excited to do that. I just, I love that. I had two meetings on Wednesday that just gave me so much life with people. It was a blessing to be with the body and, and meet and talk and help them in their journey. I love that. It's a blessing. I have some action steps for us. If you're learning and wanting to know more about how to get connected, how to get more involved in our church, we have Starting Point Fast Track coming up July 27th, or we have our group coming up in August. It's a way to help you get connected to the church. We have a water baptism. Maybe your next step in the body of Christ is to get water baptized. We have a water baptism coming up July 21st. Uh, your, your hands and your heart, your feet are always a help. So I just wanna encourage you to lend a hand. Uh, check out this slide real quick. Um, this is a slide to help us uh, when it comes to building our dream team, our serve team. So if you are looking for opportunities to serve when the service is done, we'll leave this up. Take a picture with your phone or just hold your camera up to that square and it will take you to a link or you can also go to calvarydover.org and then click get involved. And if you're looking for a place to get involved, I, I felt like if I'm gonna talk about being an active member in the church, I need to give you some, some places to go to do that and help you from the pulpit on that too. Why don't we stand together? I'm done. Thank you for letting me uh, share my heart. Like, wait, he's done before 10, 15? How is this possible? I had a little more time today. It was nice. 
so blessed by this church and I'm so blessed to, to celebrate. I'm, I'm excited to celebrate next week with, uh, with our church in 70 years. 70 years God's been using this church in this, in this city, this state. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I know pastor's excited too. We have a little surprise for him. So I'm not going to tell you what that is because you know how that is. It can kind of slip out. So it's going to be a great, a great week. So let's pray. Lord, we're so grateful. We're so grateful for what your son did for us. And the fact that you place us in a family, for those who need family, you have placed us in a family. I, and I pray, God, that we would be that family to those who need it. Lord, help us not to just be a family spiritually, but help us to be a family physically. Help us to grow in that area, God. Lord, thank you that, that you even see value in us. You make us valuable through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And you see the giftings, and you've given us giftings. You've given us natural ones at birth, but you've given us spiritual gifts as well. And God, thank you that you see us fit to join you in the mission. <clears throat> and I pray, God, that we would sanctify ourselves and consecrate ourselves to be ready because you're calling us to do things, everyday things, and may, maybe for some of us, full-time ministry. Lord, prepare our hearts for that. God, I pray that we would all feel the sense of value and worth of being part of the body of Christ, that everyone is important. Every part of the body is important. It takes everyone to be here today. And thank you, God, for dependability. I thank you, God, for a dependable church. For 70 years, we've been here. God, that's because of you. You're our leader. You're the ultimate supreme leader over this church, and you will not let this church fail. It's your church, and we thank you for that. God, we give you all the glory and praise for what you've done, how this church has impacted our lives and how it's impacted our families' lives and those who have moved away and has continued to impact in other places, Lord, around the world. We thank you for that, Lord, and we give you all the glory and praise for it. Help us to apply this to our lives. Help us to find our fit this summer, Lord, how we can be involved. And Lord, maybe be ready for this new school year coming up. And I can't believe I just said the word school. But it won't take long before that shows up. But may we be ready, Lord, to serve and to be, to be disciples of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.